Is water a living or non-living thing? Water is the basis of all the living things, all the organisms directly or indirectly depend on water for life, but is it living or non-living? First of all you have to understand what are the specific characteristics that make something living. There are seven characteristics which are required to identify if something is living or not. If something, which we have to identify whether it is living or not, has all these properties then it is considered as living. Let's have a look one. Movement All living things move in some way. This may be obvious, such as animals that are able to walk, or less obvious, such as plants that have parts that move to track the movement of the sun. But water doesn't move from one place to another by itself, it always is always transported from one place to another with the help of some external agent such as wind, gravity, some mechanical force, etc. 2. Growth A living thing always grows whether it is on cellular level, tissue level, organ level, etc. But have you ever seen water growth? If you have a half-filled jug of water then it will never become full by its own eye. E. There is no growth in water. 3. Cellular organization Every living organism has a cellular organization I. E. It is made up of cells but water is not made up of cells. It is made up of two hydrogen and one oxygen atoms which makes one molecule of water and all H2O molecules are joined together by hydrogen bonding and this organization makes water. 4. Respiration Respiration is a chemical reaction that happens within cells to release energy from food. All living organisms perform respiration whether it aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration but water never performs respiration. 5. Nutrition The intake and use of nutrients. This occurs in very different ways in different kinds of living things. Nutrients are very necessary for growth of an organism but as water never grows so it never uptake nutrients. 6. Sensitivity The ability to detect changes in the surrounding environment is called sensitivity. It is very useful for survivability of organisms but this property is not seen water eye. E. Water cannot detect changes in its environment. 7. Reproduction The ability to produce offspring or similar organism is called reproduction. It is very important for the survival of species on this planet but this property is not seen in water. 8. Excretion The process of removing waste material out of the body is called excretion. It is a process which is a result of digestion but we know that digestion is not found in water so excretion is also not a property of water. By analyzing these properties, it is found that water is non-living. In producing the following answer, I am not making fun of you however I suspect that, by the way that the question is worded, that it is a blatant attempt to get me to do a homework assignment on you behalf that is probably overdue, so here goes. The way that the question is worded around the word, considered, makes it sound as if the status of water is a matter of opinion which it isn't, water is definitely one of the alternatives that you listed. But which one? If you don't know, then I'll steer you through so that you can come up with your own answer, so here goes. All living things have seven things in common, namely, the seven characteristics of living things. These are, in no particular order, movement, can water move on its own other than under the influence of gravity? In other words, does it flow uphill whenever it wants to? Growth, does water grow? In other words does a glassful of the stuff increase in volume all on its own until it overflows? Nutrition, does it feed on anything? Or in other words, do we have to feed the Pacific Ocean on anything oh keep it alive? Excretion, does it produce any metabolic waste products that it has to get rid of? Respiration, does it respire? In other words does it break down chemicals to produce its own energy? Sensitivity, does it detect changes in its environment and react to them? Reproduction, I'll leave this one to your imagination, but just to give you a hint, take a look on a map. Are there any baby Pacific Oceans anywhere? Okay, living things must be able to carry out all seven of the above if they are to be considered, living. If water can, then it is living. If it can't then it is non-living. What do you think? In my many years of observing water as rain or snow, in pools, ponds, lakes, streams, rivers, and oceans, it is very apparent that water has many characters, and each one has changing moods and attitudes. 
I've enjoyed the refreshing caresses of a warm summer shower and hunkered down in gear as hurricane rains pounded my home and flooded the neighborhood. I've caught big fluffy snowflakes on my tongue and buried my face in the crook of my arm in a biting blizzard. I've fished from a canoe in the slow-moving water of a river and braved the treacherous rapids of the same river just a short distance upstream. I have actually dozed off while snorkeling in placid emerald water at the same beach where vicious surf destroyed piers and ate away sand dunes and homes. There were days when I could stand at the bow of the ship and gaze into the sapphire blue depths nearly 60 feet below as the ship moved gently with the easy swells. I watched the same bow crash through massive typhoon waves bringing a huge wall of green water over the foredeck. When I consider all the living things that inhabit the ocean and the dependence of all life on Earth on the presence of water, then see its destructive force, I find it hard not to see it as a cognizant entity with a really bad personality.